Hey there, Michael. Last week's report was incomplete, as Newman's son pointed out soon after it was posted. So let's finish the job this week. Yes, it seems that my report last week was missing a number of catchers. It turns out that 11 more foreign players had caught during their time in Japan. I have done further research in order to determine how it is that I miss these players and who these players are. So first, the how. I reread the Nikon Sports article, paying more attention to detail. After the mention of the two best nine players from the 1950s, the newspaper said, Nanajunin Iko de wa? That is to say, from the 1970s. So, it's not expected that several catchers were missed. Now, on to the missing catchers. First up, we have Harrison McGaylord, also known as Bucky Harris. Bucky was a member of Nagoya during that very first NPB season in the spring of 1936. He stayed with them in the summer of 1936 as well as the full-time catcher and even threw off the mound in one game in the spring of 1936 season. After the fall season, Bucky went to the Eagles where he played the following two years or four seasons, spring and fall of 1937 and spring and fall of 1938. Bucky finished second in batting with a 320 batting average in 40 games in the fall of 1938, along with five home runs and 23 RBIs. Six home runs in the previous spring, that is, spring of 1938, saw Harrison at the top of the home run list. However, due to growing tensions between the U.S. and Japan during that time, it comes as no surprise to find a note on the Baseball History blog stating the American catcher was expelled from Japan in 1939 because of his nationality. Batting second on the report tonight is Yoshio Tanaka, born in Oahu, Hawaii. According to his biography at Japan Baseball Daily, Tanaka was a high school teacher when a friend of his convinced him to move to Japan to play for the new professional baseball league in 1937. Yoshio played for the Tigers from the fall of 1937 through to the end of the war in 1944. He ranked as high as third place in the batting race of 1940 with a 293 batting average and had the most sacrifice hits with 21 in 1941. After the war, Tanaka went on to manage and coach for Hanshin and other Nippon professional teams. Next up is Charlie Hood, who signed with the Mainichi Orions mid-season in 1953 out of Yokosuka Navy Base, along with former Boston Red Sox pitcher Leo Cayley. Charlie only caught two games for the Orions, mainly playing third base in the outfield. The two sailors, still serving in the military, were only able to play night games and on holidays, whenever they could get leave. Also in 1953, Mitsuru Watanabe joined the Kintetsu Pearls from the Hawaii Red Sox. Mitsuru only lasted one season, appearing in 29 games, 21 of which he played at catcher. And like Mitsuru Watanabe, Sal Reka came to Japan the following season by way of the Hawaii Red Sox. Sal joined the Takahashi Unions as their full-time catcher in 1954, leading the league in strikeouts with 117 and batting an even 200. He was ranked fourth in, the, in home runs, though, with 23. He returned in 1955 to also catch the season that the um, unions were renamed the Tombo Unions. Rekka did manage to have a second season of double-digit home runs, hitting 10 in 80 games in 1955. However, 
His batting average was well below the Mendoza line, and he what didn't return the next season. Next up is the very interesting case of Ron Butler. His baseball reference profile only has him listed as a catcher throughout his minor league career, and as mentioned in his profile in Japan Baseball Daily, he was originally hired by Kintetsu to be a catcher in 1959. However, Butler was converted to be a pitcher in 1960 and 61 with Kintetsu. Over his two seasons as a pitcher, Ron had a record of six wins and 16 losses with a 3.76 ERA. His first season as a pitcher, Butler hit 357 with a home run and even a triple. He also played in eight games at first base that season. Nicholas Testa, not to be confused with the great Nikola Tesla, was signed by the Daimai Orions in 1962 as their catcher. He batted 163 in the 57 games that he played, with no home runs and just five RBIs. While his biggest claim to fame in the major leagues was having no at-bats in the one game he played for the San Francisco Giants, all the while committing an error in that one chance, he only committed two errors during his stint with the Orions. Then we have our one-game wonders. Toshio Miyamoto had a 10-year career in Japan playing for the Yomiuri Giants and Kokutetsu Swallows. Essentially an outfielder, Toshio played one game behind the plate in 1963 for the Swallows. Don Busan was signed by the Tombo Unions in 1955 to replace Jimmy McCabe, who suddenly returned to his homeland just before the season started. Like Miyamoto, Busan was primarily an outfielder who worked behind the plate just one game. Masami Kamiya played in only a single game for the Daimai Orions in 1951. He was signed as a catcher, and while his catching ability was plenty good enough to play, his inability to hit a changeup kept him out of the lineup all season long. Finally, there was Mei Shi Do from Taiwan. He played for the Giants from 1988 to 1991, where he reportedly signed and was listed in the player Macon as a catcher. However, he only played in the outfield at Ichigun over his entire four-year NPB career. One thing I noticed while doing this research is that the Unions and Orions came up with foreign catchers time and time again. These two franchises merged in 1958 after numerous name changes and another merger thrown in there in between. I can't help but wonder if there's a correlation between taking risks with new ways of using foreign players and the apparent instability of the franchise. Thank you, Michael, for finishing the job. I feel much better having the report complete. <laughs>